The subject for given questionnaires with one of four short stories and ask to estimate what percentage of the peers would respond in either way. As you are leaving your neighborhood supermarket, a man in a business suit asks you whether you like shopping in that store. You reply quite honestly that you do like shopping there and indicate that in addition to being close to your home, the supermarket seems to have very good meats and produce at reasonably low prices. The man then reveals that a videotape crew has filmed your comment and asks you to sign a release allowing them to use the unedited film for a TV commercial that the supermarket... Please estimate what percent of your peers you think would sign the release and what percent wouldn't. That would be exciting to be on TV. How can anyone say no to that opportunity? How embarrassing. I hate my voice and camera. How could anyone be willing to go on TV unprepared? You arrive for the first day of class in a course in your major area of study. The professor says that the grade in your course will depend on a paper due the final day of the course. He gives the class the option of two alternatives upon which they must vote. They can either do papers individually in the normal way, or they can work in teams of three persons who will submit a single paper between them. You are informed that he will give out the same number of A's, B's, and C's, etc., but that in the first case, every student will be graded individually, while in the second case, all three students... Please estimate what percent of your peers you think would vote for a group paper and what percent wouldn't. Three people together have a better chance of coming up with great ideas, not to mention that the work gets done three times as fast. How could someone not want to work in a group? Group projects never work for me. Who wants to trust someone else with their grade? While driving through a rural area near your home, you are stopped by a county police officer who informs you that you have been clocked with radar at 38 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. You believe this information to be accurate. After the policeman leaves you, you inspect your citation and find that the details on the summons regarding weather, visibility, time, and location of the violation are highly inaccurate. The citation informs you that you either must pay a $20 fine by mail without appearing in court, or you must appear in the municipal court. Please estimate what percent of your peers you think would pay the $20 fine and what percent wouldn't. Contesting the fine would cost me more than $20 in gas and time. It's not worth it. Twenty dollars is a lot. If you could get out of, of the fine by contesting it, that's definitely worth it. It is proposed in Congress that the space program be revived and that large sums be allocated for the manned and unmanned exploration of the moon and planets nearest Earth. Supporters of the proposal argue that it will provide jobs, spur technology, and promote national pride and unity. Opponents argue that a space program will either necessitate higher taxes or else drain money from important domestic priorities. Furthermore, they deny that it will accomplish the desirable effects claimed by the program's supporters. Both sides, of course, refute each other's claims and... Please estimate what percent of your peers you think would vote for the space program and what percent wouldn't. Is space exploration necessary? Those tax funds could have a much larger immediate benefit here on Earth. 
I don't see why anyone would vote for this. Space exploration is the gateway to the future. This is super cool and progressive. How could anyone vote against it? Then the subjects were asked to complete a three-page questionnaire. On the first page, they were asked to indicate which of the two behavioral options they would personally choose. On the other two pages, they were asked to rate the personal traits of the typical person who they would expect to have chosen each of the two responses. Anyone who does not want to be on TV must be really self-conscious and uptight. Anyone who doesn't mind being on TV is down to earth and knows an opportunity when it presents itself. Anyone who wants to be on TV must be really full of themselves. Anyone who doesn't is probably more humble and nice. Anyone who wants to work alone must be super controlling and be really hard to get along with. Anyone who wants to work together is a good team member who has good social skills. Anyone who wants to work in a group is lazy and doesn't care about their grades. Anyone who wants to work independently is a hard worker who has a vision. Anyone who doesn't want to pay the fine must be stingy, irrational, and entitled. It's just $20. Anyone who just pays the fine accepts their consequences and moves on. Anyone who doesn't want to contest the inaccurate charges and pay the fine must be lazy and unconcerned with perceiving honesty in society. Anyone who doesn't pay and contests is standing up for is. Anyone who supports the space referendum is childlike, not rational. They're thinking about consequences. Those who vote against it are responsibly considering the effects it would have on us. Anyone who votes against the space referendum is closed-minded. Those voting for it are progressive and open to new potentials. show that those subjects who claimed that they personally would choose one option over the other for their story tended to one, estimate more people would choose the same answer as them, and two, described the typical person who chose the opposite answer as more extreme in their personalities. This is the false consensus effect. The study was designed to explore more general tendencies for the subjects to overthink how Others share personal characteristics compared to study one. The participants were 80 Stanford undergraduates who completed a questionnaire which had 35 personal descriptive items. Half of the subjects firstly placed themselves with respect to 35 variables and the remainder of the subjects answered it in the reverse order. The hypothesis for study two is stated as such description category would estimate the percentage of college students in general in the category to be greater than subjects who put themselves in alternative categories. Category 1 is personal traits and views. Category 2 is personal preferences. Category 3 is personal characteristics. Category 4 is personal problems. Category 5 is personal activities. Category 6 is personal expectations. Category 7 is political. The item, political expectation item, the impeachment of President Nixon became unusable during the study, causing the number of items to decrease from 35 to 34. The results for the study demonstrate considerably, but less than universally support towards the hypothesis. Participants that place themselves in the descriptive category would estimate the percentage of college students in general to be higher in comparison to those participants that place themselves in the alternative category. Three out of the seven categories provided somewhat strong and consistent support for the false consensus. The most dramatic category was political expectations due to items such as women soon to be appointed to the Supreme Court, poverty, nuclear weapons being used. 
These items were seen to be relatively widespread among everyone. Subjects with opposite expectations similarly thought their own expectations were characteristics of college students in general. Supporting the hypothesis again, but less dramatic, were those items. Three descriptive categories provided support for the false consensus hypothesis, which are personal preferences, personal characteristics, and personal expectations. Everyday personal activities demonstrated no significant difference. Through the evidence and information gathered, it is evident that the false consensus effect does apply to many types of behaviors, feelings, opinions, and characteristics. However, the, there is a vagueness about the specific domain and the limits of the phenomenon. Environmental activists were shocked to learn of the new presidential administration's decisions regarding climate change and the environment. They were surprised that the presidency did not have the same regard for Mother Earth that they did. Some of their responses were documented in the NBC Washington article, Our Worst Fears, Environmental Activists Respond to Donald Trump's First Day in Office, by Alexandra. Hey dude, did you hear that uh, Trump took down the environmental policy page on the White House website? No, wait, what? I thought he was going to make like cleaner energy or at least be interested in some environmental policies. Um, hold on. Let me look it up online because I don't believe you. It's true. <laughs> Alright. I guess you are. Like, wow. I don't know that. No, yeah, dude, the president clearly doesn't care about the environment, and he's putting us and all future generations in trouble. So I guess he doesn't think like we do. Psychologists conclude that the false consensus effect tends to yield results that show a high percentage of individual bias. In other words, people tend to believe that their beliefs or opinions are the popular opinion of the majority of a group. The false consensus effect can be used to explain the environmentalist's response to President Trump's new policies. Their surprise can be attributed to their assumption that most people, including the President, shared their opinion that the environment is something worth preserving. While this may be a conscientious, noble view, that doesn't mean that everyone has the same opinion. This exemplifies the false consensus.